All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Malachi, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp, coming at you with another cold cut. In this cold cut, I'll be touching on certain events that took place at camp yesterday, right? Because, of course, brothers go out every weekend, every Friday and Saturday through the Spirit of the Lord to wake up Israel, right? And it states that in Luke chapter 14, verse 23, we have to go into the highways and hedges. As a matter of fact, I'll just pull that precept. Let's get that in Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. It reads thus, and the Lord said unto the servant, we are the servants of the Lord. Let's get that in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. Right, the servants of the Lord are the Israelites. More specifically, the brothers that go out there and labor and they have put their hand to the plow. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee though thou has not known me. So the scriptures say that Jacob are the servants of the Lord. And Jacob represents Israel. When you read Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28, Jacob is our forefather and his name was changed to Israel, which means the prince of the power. So we are the servants of the Most High God. It's not the so-called white man. It's not Moab. Right? It's not these different nations that proclaim themselves to be the chosen. The servants of the Lord are the Israelites. Let's get Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Playing upon the table, we are the servants of the Lord. Right? So again, we go out there to do the work, to wake up Israel, putting our hand to the plow. Right? Building on that foundation. Right? So we had camp yesterday. Right? The brothers, WF5 Virginia, we out there in Richmond. Or we was out there in Richmond yesterday, rather. Right, brothers mainly teach at Virginia Beach in the 757 area. But we was in Richmond, Virginia yesterday, man. Right, so the world was going out effectively. Jake got edified. You know, Jake took away the idols off their neck, stomped it to the ground, right down, down, threw the weed out, all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh I was shot. Right, Jake showing repentance in these last days. Right, and then you got these skinheads, right, these Edomites. See, I have the picture pulled up. You have these skinhead devils, right, that came up wanting to get violent with the men of the Lord, right? But nonetheless, we have to stand bold, as it states in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1, right? So none of these things move us, right? Let me get that real quick. Let's get Proverbs. Matter of fact, let's get Psalm chapter 56 and verse 1. Right, because Esau think, you know, he can get tattoos all over his face, right? He can get the chain on, right? He got the skinhead, and he think that intimidates the men of the Lord, right? Let's get Psalm chapter 56 and verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man will swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me, right? So that man is the so-called white man. He want to fight against the men of the Lord, as it states in Psalm chapter 140. Right? He's that violent man spoken about in the scriptures. He's that wicked root, man. It say, For man will swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. My enemies will daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. Right? So you had this. First it was one devil. And we rebuked him through the spirit of the Lord. And he couldn't take the rebuke. So he had to call up his crew, man. He had to call up about three more skinheads, right? And they came out trying to get violent with the men of the Lord. And it reads thus, For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Now this goes into times that we may be afraid. Now in this situation, the men of the Lord wasn't afraid at all, man. Because as it states in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, let me get that real quick. Now, there may be situations where brothers may be afraid, may be a frightened, 
you may not know what's going to happen, right? Because we just mortal men in the flesh, right? But for the most part, we stand bold in the name of Yahweh Shah. This is Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion, right? So we bold like lions, man. Let's get that in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30. As the scripture say in Genesis chapter 49, Judah is a lion's whelp, right? So brothers from the tribe of Judah and all the tribes are mighty tribes. Gad is mighty, Reuben, right? Gad is known as a troop in Genesis the 49th chapter, right? But more specifically, the top tribe or the head tribe rather is Judah and we're known as the lions. So this is Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 30. A lion, which is strongest among beasts, and turn of not away for any. So we're not going to turn away because Esau come out with his damn skinhead, a thousand tattoos, right with a damn uh, knife on his hip and a gun on the other, right threatening the men of the Lord, telling us to leave off the block. Right? So these are the men or beasts, I should say. I'm not going to refer to them, to them as men, they're beasts. As it states in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. As it states in Psalms chapter 49 and verse 20. As it states in Psalm chapter 73 and verse 22, right there, serpent spoken about in Psalm chapter 44 and verse 19. Matter of fact, let me bring that out. Psalm chapter 44 and verse 19. Though thou hast so broken us in the place of dragons, and covered us with the shadow of death, right? So that place of dragons is America, right? And when you check out these different skinhead Edomites, right, they'd be a part of these biker uh, gangs, right? And I don't know the in-depth detail about these biker gangs and, you know, the names of them, right? You got the uh, uh, Hells, um, what they call the Hells Angels, right? Hey, and some of the, hey, they violent, man. Edomite is, these Edomites are violent. They will kill you, man. Right, so the fact that the Lord put the spirit on us to stand bold in that day was all praises, man. We still give thanksgiving and reverence to the Lord for that. Right, because the Lord could have had these Edomites overthrow us, man, if we weren't in the spirit. Right, but nonetheless, we stood our ground, right, and the angels encamped round about us. Right, so we got this devil right here. He kind of got the knife on his hip, right, smoking his damn jack, right, with a damn rod, right? And then you got this guy, man. You got this guy. And these are low-level Edomites, man. And I was laughing with my rib about that, man. After we wrapped up camp, we headed home. You know, I'm kind of laughing with my rib about it. Hey, those was low-level devils, man. Right? Now, all devils are low-level, in my opinion. Right? But you got the lowest of the low. Right? Because you might got some Edomites that kind of got some form of knowledge, some kind of wisdom and understanding. Right, but these devils they didn't want to deal with knowledge. And after we rebuked them and cut them up through the spirit and gave them a plethora of precepts about how they going in slavery, we gave them Jeremiah 30 and 16. Right? We could have gave them Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 2, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. What's that second edges chapter 13, verse 13? Uh, uh, uh um, Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16, I believe. Right? We could have Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 4. Right, we could have gave them a thousand precepts on their destruction and their downfall. Galatians six and seven, Colossians three twenty five, Galatians chapter five and verse ten, Wisdom of Solomon chapter eleven and verse sixteen. Right, so we gave them a fair amount of precepts on how the Lord is going to overthrow their nation, and they couldn't deal with it. Right, and they didn't want to deal with knowledge. Right, because I had tried to have a respectful dialogue with these devils, and they couldn't do it, man. Right, they started cussing me out. Right, spitting at us, right, mean mugging, and doing all manner of mischief and evil to the servants of the Lord. Right? Let's get Psalm chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, up. Uh, Matter of fact, let's get verse five. The Lord trieth the righteous. So we was being tried at that moment, right? Now, if brothers weren't in the spirit, brothers probably could have fleed. You know, brother, hey, brother, I don't know, brother. You know, these these 
makes Edomites different, right? Because you got different kind of Edomites, but they all the same, right? You might got your Edomites, the preppy Edomite. You know, he might put on a suit, a tie. He might shave his beard. He effeminate, right? He might be in the damn uh, highest office in New York, right? He got his uh, so-called, um, they say, blue-collar job, right? He might own a, a Fortune 500 company, right? He might have a, a franchises uh, throughout America. He might be well off. He might live in Beverly Hills. He might live in, um, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, rich and wealthy neighborhoods of the land. Right? You got different kind of Edomites. Then you got these Edomites, man. You got these damn white trash, damn, damn uh, 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 skinhead devils, man. So it's levels to it. Right? And I believe the one he said he was Germany, man. He's from Germany. Right? So, hey, that's a neo-Nazi in the flesh. And they don't know that the Lord hates them, man. They think the Lord is for their cause. They think that Jesus Christ is a white man. And that was what I was trying to deal with these devils about. Hey, what color is Jesus Christ? They didn't want to deal with it. They wanted to tap dance around the question. They wanted to get violent. Because Esau can't deal with you on an intellectual level, especially not the men of the Lord. Right? And they try to compare us to KKK. Hey, first of all, we never hung any Edomites from a tree, although we would like to. We never afflicted any bodily harm on Esau. We understand that the Lord is going to do that in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Scriptures say, wait ye upon me until the day that I rise up to the prey. Uh, Psalm chapter 27 and verse 12, I believe it is. Let me bring that up. Psalms 27 and 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. So like it, verse 14 is what I want. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So we have to wait on the most high. Right, so how can you compare us to KKK? Right, KKK actually afflicted bodily harm upon blacks and Hispanics. Right, there's a pictures to prove that. Thousands of lynchings, hundreds of thousands of lynchings, rather, from the time that America was established up until now. When Derek Chauvin put his uh, 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 knee upon the neck of George Floyd, that was a modern day lynching. Right, because when they used to lynch our people, Right, they used to have uh, damn parties, man. They used to rejoice. We used to check out certain of these pictures where Jake is up there hanging on a tree. You got thousands of Edomites standing around, and they take a picture and they send it throughout different cities and towns, rejoicing at the downfall of Israel. That's why in Psalms 137, they said they said race it, race it, even to the foundation of the uh, foundation thereof, meaning destroy it, destroy it. They stood on the other side. And they watched us be killed and murdered. So the nerve of these devils to come out and speak anything against the servants of the Lord. When y'all have been the wickedest, most vile people on this planet. Let me get that in Song of the Three Holy Children. Matter of fact, before I get there, let me get first Maccabees. Right? Let me get first Maccabees chapter 8 and verse 18. First Maccabees chapter 8 and verse 18. And to treat, so like, and to entreat them that they would take the yoke from them. For they saw that the kingdom of the Grecians did oppress Israel with servitude. Right? And these are modern day Greeks, man. Right, because the Greeks were Edomites. So were the Romans. So this is who you come from. This is your line. This is your descendants. All right, so let's get um Song of the Three Holy Children. Song of the Three Holy Children, verse 9. And thou didst deliver us into the hand of lawless enemies. That's what Esau is. He's a he's a lawless enemy. Right? And with these hell angels, they say they're lawless. 
You know, they riding around in their Harley Davidsons, their motorcycles, and they dare nigger to get out of line. They say, um, most hateful forsakers of God. Because when we was out there rebuking them, they were saying, hell, Satan, just being all manner of vow, speaking blasphemy. Matthew chapter 9, verse 3. It say, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. These are the most wicked people in all the world. Look at the pride of these devils, man. Trying to be down. You know, these, these devils make me sick, man. Right, but nonetheless, I had to do a video on it to expound more on this situation. Right? So eventually these devils end up leaving. And again, if they wanted to do something, they could have did it. But that goes to show you they really fear the men of the Lord. Let me get that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. They say, uh, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor. So now we're standing in great boldness in front of the face of Esau. Now in the, in the 30s and the 40s, we couldn't do this. right? We would be hung from trees. There was different laws set up to actually hinder us from doing the work of the Lord. We would get harassed. We would get stopped and frisked and beat down by billy clubs. You would find us in a ditch somewhere if we did this in the 40s. Right, but this is not the 40s, man. Right, it's a new, it's a, it's a new dawn, a new day. The Lord is putting that spirit back in his nation of strength, of boldness, of wisdom. And that's ultimately why these devils are perplexed and in distress and, and infuriated at the fact that we waking up because they know it's their demise and their downfall. Right? Let me get Revelation the 11th chapter. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right. So right now, right that three days and a half represent a certain dispensation of time. Right now, the spirit of the Lord is coming upon the servants. We're rising up and great fear is falling upon our enemies. I don't just say in Psalm 37 and 13, the Lord shall laugh at him when he see that his day is coming. Job chapter 14 and verse 5. Let's also get Ezekiel, I believe, 33. Maybe 37. Ezekiel 37 and verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. The Israelites are the slain. That breath represents wisdom. Let me get that in second address. Matter of fact, let me get that in Sirach, the 24th chapter. Right? Sirach chapter 24 in verse 24. See what I want. Right. You also got one in second Edges chapter 3 and verse 5. <clears throat> she is the breath. Let's get the one in second edge of chapter 33 and verse 5. Then we'll go back to that.
right? Let's get to chapter 3 and verse 5. It reads, And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and did us breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. So the Lord gave Adam the wisdom, right, to govern over the, so like to govern over the nations during his time. The chosen Adam, he was given that wisdom, that knowledge, and that understanding in the commandments of the Lord, as it states in Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 7, so that he may govern the earth. Right, so breath represents wisdom. And we're going to get the precept on that. All right, so lock it. Bear with me. Uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 24. It says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness, for she is the breath of the power of God. So wisdom is the breath of life, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty, therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. Right, so going back to Ezekiel 37 and 10, it says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into me, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So we are an army. That's why the Lord said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, you have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Because in armies, you have soldiers, you have officers, you have captains, what Esau calls lieutenants. Right, things of that nature. You have these different things in war. Right? So right now we're at war with the so-called white man. We're at war with the nations. We're at war with the uh the uh, the left hand side, right? The spiritual realm, the demons, the spirits, the principalities. We are at war with all these different things. We read Ephesians chapter six, verse ten on down. There's spiritual warfare and there's also physical warfare being raged against the Israelites. But nonetheless, Esau, he knows we're an army and he's in great fear because we're waking up. Right? So again, I just wanted to touch on that uh, picture of Esau, um, you know, coming up for the so-called static yesterday, but the most I delivered his service. What else I want? Let's see. We're going to end it off with this precept. Let's get Psalm chapter 16. In verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. And your right hand represents your strength. So the Lord is our strength. I shall not be moved. So we're not going to be moved, man. You can tell us, get off the block. You can threaten us with guns, with your, with your blessing, Esau, which is the weapon. You can threaten us with our life. We don't give a damn about our life, first of all, right? Because the scriptures say, like the apostle Paul said, uh, to die is gain, right? So if we die for the Lord, that's a crown being placed upon our head, you know? So I shall not be moved. So with that, I'm going to give all praises unto Yahweh by Shema Shachim Malachi Yahushai. Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson. This is also it's like an exhortation to every brother out there that's laboring pushing this truth, being fervent for the most high.
in the midst of the danger, in the midst of the affliction, the scoffers, the demons, the tumults, the uprising. Stay ten toes down for the name of the Lord. Give your life if need be, or take a life, you know, if the Lord allows that to happen. Right? So that's what it is. So with that, all praises to Yahweh Shemma Mashaq Malak Yahweh Shalom.